position. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Justin Ferry uh, with CamJ Consulting. And on behalf of the CAT Lab and the Eastern Transportation Coalition, uh, I'd like to welcome you to December's RIDIS workshop, What's New with PDA and RIDIS. As we get started, I have a couple of housekeeping, housekeeping items for everyone. Today, we're in Zoom webinar. Uh, that means a couple of things. The first one is that you can connect audio in two different ways. You can use your computer audio or your phone audio. Hopefully, anyone with audio issues can see the slide and get that resolved. Uh, but if that is not the case, that you can email Esther Cleet at ecleet at kmjinc.com with any questions or any other technical questions that you may have. Uh, this me web meeting is being recorded for posterity. And since we are in Zoom webinar today, uh, we'll be using the Q&A box to answer questions uh, for the presenters. Uh, the chat box is not available for participants today. So like I said, at the bottom of your screen, you can click the Q&A icon. Uh, you can also click the raise hand button. And if it's an appropriate time and, and we have some time for your audible question, uh, we may be able to ask you to unmute. So uh, with that, I'd like to introduce Mary Grace Parker, the Freight Program Director from the Eastern Transportation Coalition. Hi, Mary Grace. Good morning or good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks, Justin. I'm happy to be here today stepping in for my colleague, Cheryl Bradley, um, who's on a plane uh, somewhere getting a getting a artismo program up and running and doing a great job. So thank you. So I just want to give a quick update on the coalition before I turn this over. Uh, so let me start by talking about some recent and upcoming events. Uh, we've had our regional hogs and person exchanges, which was focused on virtual reality TIM training. Um, those were in New England, Potomac, and Delaware Valley. Uh, we had our TDM Technical Advisory Committee back on October 10th. Uh, the last British user group meeting on October 19th. Uh, a very informative travel information summit in Raleigh, which was both in person and by web back in late October. Um, a truck parking working group meeting, um, which was focused on industry, Ask the Driver back in November, a virtual information exchange looking at moving the needle on connected automated vehicle research that was in November, um, another TDM state point of contact meeting, which was uh, back in November 14th, and then um, back on November 21st, uh, the mileage base user fee international truck pilot report. Um, and essentially, that was a presentation on showing the work that the coalition's been doing under our mileage-based um, user fee program under the SITSFA grants um, and, and focused on the truck portion of that work. Some upcoming events. We've got a few more before we sort of all say happy holidays and disappear, hopefully for a few days of uh, a time off for everyone. We have the Southern Hogs ex in-person exchange um, with virtual reality TIM training, which is uh, a part of where Cheryl's going to be. Uh, a freight data and planning working group meeting on December 14th. That's going to be focused at looking at Maryland's um, transportation uh, model, including their um, CF20 freight model. So if anybody's interested um, in that, even if you're not normally part of our freight data and planning group, if you are a public agency member, please reach out and uh, we may be able to get you into that session. It's a virtual one. And then last but not least, uh, a virtual exchange with New York State DOT, um, who kicked off a really innovative bridge strike task force initiative, focusing on some of the issues we're having with bridge hits on parkways and and, and state roads and lower bridges. Um, again, that's an agency invite, very much focused operationally. Um, but again, if there's interest in that, if you don't have an invite um, and you're with a, a DOT operating agency, please reach out and we'll see if we can uh, make sure we add you to that uh, event. So a lot going on um, through the fall and, uh, and still. Um, today, we've got a great cross-section of folks here today. I won't read them all, but you can see um, both from organizations like AASHTO, um, all the way through our DOTs, our MPOs, Port Authorities, Transportation Authorities, our Turnpikes, um, and, and some of the Federal Highway and US DOT offices. So um, good to have everybody here today. So thank you again for that. So with that, I'd like to turn this over and I'm going to wish you all a happy holidays because I won't be able to stay here for the whole session. But I want to introduce our our featured speaker today, which is Rick Ayers. Uh, many of you know Rick with the UMD Cat Lab. 
He's a public sector advocate. He has over 30 years of experience uh, working with location-based enterprise software system at the federal, state, and local levels. Currently in the role he has today, he's serving to support uh, you folks, state and local transportation agencies, and the successful implementation and deployment of this RIDIS system. Um, and he's also worked extensively with the coalition member agencies, as well as federal and state transportation agencies to support their respective enterprise implementation of the RIDIS platform. So really happy to introduce Rick today and talk about the great work they continue to do um, with RIDIS. So again, um, good luck to all of you. Happy holidays. I'll be on for a little while. Um, but thank you again for joining today. Mary Grace, thanks for that. Uh, thanks for that kind introduction. I don't know who that guy was in that picture. <laughs> I've let things grow out a little bit for the winter break, I suppose. But uh, Mary Grace, again, thank you. Justin, thank you for setting things up. And uh, KMJ folks and the Eastern Transportation Coalition for allowing the CAT Lab to uh, share our time with you for this particular workshop. Uh, a lot of a lot of exciting things to share this afternoon. Um, most of you are probably, um, most of you that are on today's session or participating in today's workshop um, probably have attended a number of the past several RITUS user group meetings, which are also hosted by the Eastern Transportation Coalition. At the end of those user group meetings, we typically wrap up with Michael Pack, our director, giving you kind of an overview of some of the new features, functions, capabilities that we've implemented uh, in RIDIS and Probe Data Analytics, and kind of give you a roadmap and insights to some of the things that are uh, that are planned to be implemented into RIDIS. Today, I want to kind of dive a little bit deeper with regard to some of the things that Michael shared with us during our last user group meeting. Uh, and explore those in detail. I'm personally excited about a number of the new features and functions of, of uh, Redis and PDA. So in terms of agenda and what I hope to cover within uh, in the next hour plus with all of you is uh, give you an overview of a couple of new feature, uh, couple of new features within the traffic map of Redis. Uh, if you're a full RITIS customer, you uh, are certainly familiar with Traffic Map. That's our medium weight, ATMS-like um, kind of map viewer of real-time uh, real situational awareness to speeds, uh, probe speeds, as well as incidents, work zones, and so forth across your respective roadway network. There's a few additional new layers and tiles uh, that we've implemented and deployed. I'm going to explore those with you in some detail. Uh, because uh, some really, really interesting things going on there. A couple of months ago, we released uh, within Probe Data Analytics a new tool called the Corridor Speed Bins tool. So I'm going to spend some time covering that in some detail, explaining it a little bit more uh, in terms of how the output report or the data visualization is, is laid out. Uh, because unless you spend time with it, it's not super clear. Oh, there's these bins and boxes and what do they mean? So I'm going to talk to you about that uh, in a little bit more detail. My favorite new enhancement of all time by far uh, is this guy right here, the new route selection feature. So I'm sorry to those states that are not NREX XD customers. Uh, this, this is a new feature that we've initially rolled out for NREX XD customers. Um, which is a predominant number of you uh, across the country. Super excited to share that with you. And then uh, real quick, uh, real quickly towards the end, uh, time permitting, uh, I'll just share with you this new capability that we released, the ability to share dashboards. If you're all familiar with how dashboards within Probe Data Analytics work, you go through all this time to set up and configure all these widgets within your dashboard and then you can't share it with anybody until recently. So we're excited to announce and, and, and uh, I'll share that with you. So thanks again, everyone for attending. Looks like we have 75 folks on the line. Real quickly, I know that some of you'd like to follow along um, in real time with my uh, slide deck. 
grab your phone, take a, take a snapshot of this QR code. It's a PDF copy of today's slide deck. Now then, we are recording today's session uh, and KMJ Eastern Transportation Coalition will make today's slide deck and recording available at some future date. But if you want an early, uh, early view of the slide deck, uh, take a photo of that and uh, download the PDF. I'll have this QR code again uh, momentarily. Um, I always, I, I always like to stress again, kind of the, kind of the enormity of Ritus as a platform, uh, and 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 what we do as a software entity, the Cat Lab, in terms of integrating authoritative content from your agencies, your respective agencies, fusing that, processing it, normalizing it, organizing it, and then archiving it so that we can look at, we can evaluate, we can query, and uh, using probe data analytics and some of the tools that I'll be sharing with you today uh, to help inform and, and provide data-driven insights uh, to the work that you do as planners and operators uh, within your respective uh, transportation agency. Uh, one of the first things I wanted to share with you are these new tile layers within a uh, traffic map that are uh, congestion only traffic tiles. So as you know, you have lots of different ways to render real-time speed, uh, uh, the raw speed, comparative speed, congestion. Well, we released a couple of months ago this congestion only tile layer for both congestion and comparative speed so that you can declutter the map display uh, so that it's not all this green everywhere, right? If no matter what the tile layer is that you're looking at, you generally, uh, you generally want to push aside any of the noise and focus on the issues at hand. And that's why this new congestion only uh, toggle and option is really important lets you just focus again on those trouble spots within your respective uh, jurisdiction, overlay incidents, accidents, work zones, and, and uh, get a better feel for what's happening in context to the issues at hand. I'll demo this in a, in a moment. Uh, the other kind of cool new layer within traffic map is a road weather layer. Um, in this short demo, you can see as we toggle the weather service, NEXRAD weather radar layer on and off gear, the underlying road weather layer is color coded. And coincidentally, it's color coded based upon precipitation rate that's being returned through that NEXRAD uh, weather radar service. So this is real time. It's dynamic. So we're updating minute by minute, or well, at whatever frequency NEXRAD weather radar service is being pushed to us, most likely three to five minutes actually. We're overlaying that with every single roadway segment and, and capturing and archiving uh, the individual uh, road weather precipitation rate uh, at that particular moment. So, uh, kind of with that as a quick kind of introduction, I'm going to dive into a demo. Uh, before I go too much further, there, there will be a couple of points throughout my presentation and today's workshop that uh, I will have two polling questions. The first one will be coming up here shortly after my demo. Uh, but again, if you have any questions, just post those in the Q&A. Uh, through Zoom, there's a Q&A option. Throw those questions into the Q&A area and, um, and, we can, um, and we can get to those if they're presented. Justin, I'll check in with you periodically um, on whether or not we have any questions. So let's go on to a quick demo. Justin, can you see my browser? I can. It looks good. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. So I've logged in to Redis. And as most of you are probably familiar, that 
medium weight ATMS like real time situational view, uh, viewer within RIDIS is called traffic map and within the transportation system status tab. If you open up your traffic map, you've probably cluttered with <laughs> real time probe speed data for the respective probe data provider uh, within your state. What I first wanted to share with you uh, is this new road weather layer uh, that we've implemented within uh, the traffic map. Uh, I'm gonna first kind of explore this in context to turning on the weather radar layer. Hopefully most of you are familiar with uh, the weather radar layer. Again, this is a, a, a national so nationally sourced uh, weather radar service from the Na uh, National Weather Service and it's real-time uh, precipitation across uh, the United States. So we've got this, this storm here um, that's moving to New England. We have some more rain coming in. I think somebody referred that to as uh, atmospheric river. It's hitting the Northwest. But notice as, as I zoom, zoom in here, I'm going to, Third from the bottom, at least within my layer list, you're gonna notice that there's this new weather radar or road weather data layer. If you click that, turn it on, it might be difficult to see in my dis within um, my view, my map view, but the, the roads underneath the weather radar turned on and they're color coded. Let's zoom in and let's look at that a little bit closer. So we'll zoom into Portland. Notice I've got some yellow lines here, green lines, green lines. Now let me turn the weather radar layer off. Ah, there they are. Now as I zoom in, of course it's all scale dependent like most layers within uh, RIDIS traffic map. You can actually see what we're capturing in terms of precipitation rate for every single road segment that that precipitation, the weather radar has passed over uh, in, in near real time. So the color coding uh, is, sim uh, is symbolic for precipitation rate. Interestingly, you might ask, hey, Rick, uh, can I double click on that on these layers to get info? about the precipitation rate? Currently, no. Uh, yet, that's something I want to kind of ping you about. If you think that's of interest, might be of value, uh, we, can, we can implement that. So let me go back and explore the other snowstorm, kind of give you a sense for what that might look like with, sorry, not snowstorm, but this is a snowstorm. What it might look like with snow? Notice as I zoom into this area of the country where there are experiencing snow squalls or snow, that road weather layer has a different color scheme. Now, what we're doing behind the scenes is we're overlaying the weather radar service from NextRad with, uh, with a road database uh, that's used to kind of capture, it's essentially being used to capture uh, probe speed data. And again, in near real time, we're, we're taking the values from NextRad saying, all right, we're getting six inches per hour or six inches a minute or whatever the rate is. And we're associating that with the road segment. Now then, why is this maybe of interest? Well, we added this layer as just a data visualization for now, but the implications are huge. The implications are huge because we are archiving every bit of this precipitation data for every single road and have been doing so for more than more than a year now. Uh, we've gone back and done some analysis in our, uh, in our archive database and, and pulled in additional information about uh, precipitation rates on road segments. The implications are huge because in the future, when you when you begin to look at analytics within PDA, and you ask questions about congestion or other performance measure on a roadway for a particular uh, time of day or during a particular week or month, we'll be able to overlay weather on top of, say, a congestion scan. 
we'll be able to toggle different layers, maybe in a trend map, we'll be able to see, okay, was weather a, a contributing factor to this particular, to the congestion during this time? Oh, talk about causes of congestion. Guess what? Now we're, you know, this is an underlying or underpinning data layer that helps provide a more accurate representative view or insight to whether or not uh, weather was a contributing factor to, uh, to the congestion along a particular corridor. So super exciting. Again, this is just more or less just a visualization layer to give you context to what's happening on the roads uh, in, uh, at the moment or in near real time relative to uh, weather radar precipitation values. So with that, uh, I want to next move into probe speed data. Remember, I mentioned in the first couple of slides, one of those first two slides, that we've added this condition or this toggle, if you will, to kind of basically clean up your, your traffic map, right? By default, when you turn on whatever your probe data provider is, whoever your probe data provider is, whether that's NRICS or here, by default, um, I think the probe speed layer or the traffic tile that's active is congestion. Some of you may have changed it to speed. I'm not a big fan of speed or congestion. I kind of like comparative speed, but even with comparative speed turned on, right? As you zoom into in particular, it just gets cluttered. And, you know, there's a lot of green, and you know, if I have my incidents turned on, it, it, you know, it, while there's some layering going on there, uh, it, it just can be overwhelming and kind of detract from what the focus of the map should be, particularly from an operations perspective. So what we've done, if you explore actual probe data layer, you dive into, you know how you have these configuration options for all the different layers within traffic map? You explore the particular, uh, your probe data provider. And again, you've got, by default, you have four different traffic tiles that you can look at. Unlike Google traffic map, which is generally speed, you know, we give you the option to look at congestion, comparative speed, average congestion. But, but even with these, again, I like to clean this up. So now with, with two of the layers, with the comparative speed layer and the congestion layer, you have this option to only look at the lowest values. Meaning for comparative speed, where I see red and or black and or yellow, it's out of the it's out of the ordinary. Uh, it's out of the ordinary speed for that segment of roadway for that time of day and that day of the week. And what I what I again, what I really love about these new options for our traffic tiles, is that it really it lets you very quickly focus on where there's issues. You know, I'm willing to bet if I turn on incidents, you know, there's something going on here. Um, but great way to kind of control, minimize uh, some of the clutter in traffic map and focus your attention on the areas that demand focus. So those are the new traffic tile uh, options within traffic map okay all right well i'm going to i'm going to pause for a moment go back to my deck first you see are there any questions justin uh we don't have any questions right now Awesome, I'm doing a great job in explaining all this. <laughs> well, with that, I'm gonna pose a question. This is our first polling question. Um, after I read it out, uh, we'll get it with get this posted to you guys. Um, uh, now that you've seen the new road weather layer in Redis traffic map, do you feel that it would be valuable to be able to click on an individual road segment 
and get a pop-up with precipitation type and rate values. So right now, remember, you, you can't click on those road weather layer road segments and get information about, well, what does the color mean? Is, you know, is, what is that rate that's going on right there? It's just, it's just a visualization layer and traffic map. So the question to you is, do you think it would be useful? Uh, yes or no? Give you a few moments to answer that question. Justin, are you or Esther moderating the poll polling questions? Uh, we can both see. Yeah, I think we can close the poll in three, two, one. Fabulous. Okay. Shocker. Yeah, I think it would. I think it would be super valuable. Also, um, not only from an operations perspective, but just you know, maybe you have uh, maybe you have work crew out, uh, or there's been uh, a, an event that took place, and you're trying to trying to identify pools of pre precipitation that may be impacting them. Rate would be, you know, precipitation rate would be super, super helpful. So thanks for your feedback on that. I totally agree. I'm going to send that to the developers and we'll get that rolled out next week. <laughs> no, not really. But I tell you what, that your feedback just now is really helpful and it's going to get, uh, it will be put in the, uh, put on the roadmap. So thank you. All right. Uh, the next, uh, the next capability I wanted to share with you, the new, new feature implemented in probe data analytics is the route selection tool. I, I've been with cat lab almost five years now. I've been wanting something like this since I joined the team. Uh, I'm again, really excited. I think this is, kind of game changing in terms of the ability to do things like, this is a pretty simple route that was digitized uh, in, this, uh, in this particular slide. But what I, what I think may be useful for some of you, if you're doing like a corridor performance report and the corridor that you wanna analyze is more of a, a commuter corridor and it doesn't necessarily follow, let's say, you know, US 29 uh, the entire way or US 1 the entire way or all of I-95. Maybe you wanna understand patterns of movement or patterns of congestion or other performance measures between, you know, the suburbs to places of work. And sometimes those are uh, sinuous routes that people take. I was sharing this with a friend of mine, you know, my wife, the route that she takes to get to work, she's on probably 10 different roads, but she's on different 10 different roads with a, a equal number of hundreds of drivers every morning uh, trying to get to Maryfield, which is an area in Northern Virginia. So this new route selection tool, I'll just caveat this again, currently only available for X, uh, NRIX XD uh, data subscribers. Sorry, TMC segments are coming, but down the road. When you're setting up and, and defining or digitizing your route in the map, you wanna, you wanna zoom in as much as possible uh, to kind of help define the starting segment and the waypoints and or the ending segment of your route. And you'll see what I mean and why this is important uh, as you move, move along. Um, just some caveats, make sure that you're on the correct side of the road. Everything, uh, all probe data, um, the, the underlying road database is bi-directional, right? You've got east and westbound lanes and north and southbound lanes. So when you're setting up your, when you're, you're defining your route, you want to make sure that you're clicking on the right side of the road, if you will, for the route that you want to establish. Um, so let's, uh, let's just get into that. And I'll give you a quick demo of that right now. I'm going to turn my, turn my video off. I need to turn my video off. 
So Justin, another quick question. As the resolution, my monitor, everything seemed to be pretty clean. Yep. Yeah, we can see pretty clearly. Okay. Uh, some of the segments are looking a little fuzzy, but I think we're okay. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna step into the corridor speed bins tool uh, later, kind of walk through that in a lot more detail. But just as a just as an example of how you would use this new route selection uh, route selection function within Probe Data Analytics, you're typically gonna find it. Uh, you're gonna find this capability again if you're a Enrix XD uh, Probe Data subscriber. You're going to see this uh, this feature, if you will, in corridor speed bins, congestion scan. Uh, you'll see it in the corridor time comparison tool, trend maps. It's just this new way to enhance and make, quite honestly, more efficient your ability to uh, identify the roads that you want analyzed in your query. Uh, whether it's quarter speed bin or any other tool within Probe Data Analytics. As an Enrix XD uh, user, subscriber, act, make sure that you define that those are the segments that you want. For quarter speed bins, you're either going to uh, you're either going to spell out the road that you want analyzed, or you're going to use this new route selection feature. So I'm going to zoom in here close to Southern Fairfax County. I'm gonna change my, actually, you know what? I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep my base map as satellite aerial image. Once you activate this route selection uh, tab or function within the select roads uh, module of the, of the query, you, first thing you wanna do is activate and indicate to the tool that you want to begin to define your route. Once you once you click that blue box, PDA is now ready for you to hover over, go move your cursor over the map. And notice what happens as I hover my cursor over the, over the map or road segments, you see these blue, I am going to change this, it'd be easier to see, are these little purple uh, segments, one for the southbound, one for the northbound, one for the southbound. I want to define my route heading in a northerly direction. So I'm going to hover over this guy, single click it, and oh yeah, that, that arrow's in the right direction. Um, I want to, I'm going to move in a northerly direction to define my route. Now then, I could continue to add waypoints. Look what happens if I get on the wrong side of the road. Notice how my route is now going to the intersection and coming back. Well, that's an error. No problem. You could delete vertices or you could delete waypoints by just getting rid of them. So next, I want to take this kind of crazy route that maybe... I want to use to get to Maryfield from Southern Fairfax County. And I can continue to define these waypoints. Up to 10 waypoints. So that now I have this really intricate, sinuous, non, it's non-linear, but it's contiguous. It's a contiguous route. I had somebody ping me the other day, forget which state it was. They were trying to open, uh, they were trying to open a trend map um, as a congestion scan. Well, they had a whole bunch of roads as part of their trend map. It was in their analysis. And you know, there's certain tools like the corridor speed bin tool, the congestion scan, the temporal comparison map, or the um, uh, corridor time comparison tool. That analysis is for a corridor, and that corridor is aligned along a roadway diagram. And you get either heat maps or speed bins or a graph 
indicating different performance measures for the time period analyzed. But all those roads are contiguous. Up until we release this tool, you could not do this. It, it would take you hours to define this type of route for analysis using any of our tools, let alone corridor speed bend tool. Imagine, I mean, imagine trying to set up this route or this corridor to be analyzed just using road names. It would be a nightmare. So we've set this up for you. Once you've defined your route or the corridor that you want analyzed that is contiguous, just make sure you hit the add route uh, button. And now you've got a northerly, uh, northerly oriented route that will be part of your analysis. If you want to do the same thing for the opposite direction, you just come in here and you just start digitizing your return route on the opposite side of the road, like so. Let's see if I can get this without zooming in. Very touchy. That's why we that's why we recommend you know, zoom in if you really want to make sure you're getting the right side of the road. Just zoom in, zoom out uh, to, to manage that. Now I've got two directions of road that I can analyze within my corridor speed bend tool. Uh, so really, really terrific way to custom configure, identify uh, again what I, I'm sure there's plenty of other use cases out there. But the one that I thought of are these unique commuter pattern corridors that, again, don't follow the traditional single corridor from point A to point B. Um, is there a way to respond? Anybody like applause for that new tool? <laughs> I love it. I just absolutely love it. Um, so that's the new corridor speed bins tool. Looks like we have a question. Should I pause now? That's the new quarter speed. That's the that's the new route selection uh, functionality. Do we want to hit the questions first before we get into the poll? Yeah, I think so. It, it's relevant to the to that last pre uh, demo. Fire away. All right. So Nathan Peck asked, "Can you explain if how this may get expanded to other data sets? Our agency only has a here here data subscription at the moment." Should I expect this function in the future or should we lobby our data people for changes? <laughs> Great question. You know, a lot of, a lot of the functionality that, uh, that we implement, new tools, new functionality, uh, it, it's generally gonna be implemented to support the vast majority of our user community. If you are in fact a here customer, um, you know, you have, either TMC segments to work with or topological subsegments. Was was Nathaniel, were you, what state were you from? Nathan. I didn't get that. Anyway, there's only a few states that are here states. Um, we will be implementing that functionality eventually. That's all, that's what I can share with you because it's gotta start somewhere. We'll get there eventually. Timeline, Illinois, thank you. Yeah, timeline, um, you know what, ping me, Nathan, and maybe we can, um, maybe I could get some closer, closer range in terms of when that might be implemented. You got my email. Ian, uh, for rock selection in congestion, in congestion scan, does the resulting scan mark every turn along with major intersections on the route? You know, with congestion scan, Ian, um, it it does some auto labeling of of junctions and intersections along that along the corridor. Some of those some of the labels get dropped out just to make that uh, that roadway diagram a little bit cleaner. So it's questionable as to which junctions will get labeled along the way, but it it should. I'll just I'll just share that with you. 
keep in mind that, yeah, you just have to. Oh, go ahead, Justin. Oh, no, sorry. That was just some admin work on the back end. Okay, so we're clear. Cool, cool, cool. Hopefully that was in helpful. All right. We have our next polling question uh, for probe data analytics and RITUS traffic map. This is kind of a, I, I'm placing this polling question out there to you because it's relevant, kind of relevant to defining a route. Think about how cool it would be if within the map frame of probe data analytics, while you're defining a route, you could start by typing, opening up this find box that lets you type in an address or an intersection or a place name. The map zooms to that location, kind of like a standard geocoding tool or, or search tool within you know, consumer-based mapping apps. We navigate you to that location, and then you can begin to navigate or create your route for setting up the spatial parameter of your query. We'd also implement this in traffic map. Right? It's super frustrating, right? Like if you want to dig into some place and, and see what's going on, today you have to zoom, zoom in, zoom out with your mouse and, and or map controls and pan around. There's no search or find function with any of the mapping tool, mapping functions of RIDIS. So the question at hand for probe data analytics and RIDIS traffic map, do you feel that it'd be valuable to have a geocoding or place search function incorporated into mapping tools, similar to other consumer web mapping applications? The places search function would allow you to search by address, intersection, city, county, place name, yes or no? It looks like we can close the poll. All right. I'd be and shocked. Yep. <laughs> shocked that this wasn't almost a hundred percent. Yeah. So thank you. I'm, this is kind of self-serving. <laughs> I wanted that this functionality in traffic map and, and probe data analytics for for years. Uh, so now I have now I have some weight behind my uh, my ask. Honestly, I think this is something that's already on the priority list uh, with our development team. Uh, your positive response to this feature being added to uh, probe data analytics will do nothing more than up uh, the motivation and the justification uh, for getting this, getting that implemented. So next, uh, Michael had mentioned, we've talked about Corridor Speedbins tool. Uh, during our last uh, quarterly user group meeting, um, if you uh, if if you're with if you got some training from me uh, in the past several months from an individual state, and I roll all over the country uh, delivering on-site training, uh, you've probably been exposed to the corridor speed bin tool. Uh, what I'm going to share with you today, I think, is even a deeper dive than I I truly give this tool uh, uh, the adequate amount of time that it deserves. So because it, it's, it's different than other tools, at least the output data visualization is, is quite a bit different or a little bit different than other output data visualizations from probe, probe data analytics. It was designed, the quarter speed bins tool was designed largely to identify delay along a corridor or your commuter route as defined through that route selection tool. What I've been using it for lately, because it seemed, this seems to be kind of a predominant issue in a number of states across the country. Everywhere I go to deliver on-site training, RITUS on-site training, hey, Rick, what tools would you recommend that we use to identify excessive speeds? Awesome tool for identifying excessive speeds. And you're going to see a couple of uh, uh, use cases of that. I'm going to walk through that and illustrate how you could set up um, spatial and temporal parameter of a query for quarter speed bin analysis. 
and you could tweak and configure uh, your output to either look at delay or look at excessive speeds. Really, really interesting, great way to identify excessive speeds. Not being on the maintenance side of things or operations side, I have heard that uh, the output data visualization from quarter speed bins could be super useful for those of you who are doing regular reporting on work zones. Like throughout a given day, how many hours throughout the throughout a given day or a given week or a given month for my work zone, how many hours were the vehicles traveling at zero to 40 miles per hour? 41 to uh, 50 uh, miles per hour, and then 51 or above, right? So you could break down the hours or percentage of readings uh, for the work zone. Um, also, as you'll see, very, very helpful because it's no different than any other PDA tool. You still have to define the where or the spatial parameter of where you want this analysis to be conducted, as well as the temporal. But the output, not only is it kind of break down in these bins, how many hours, how many hours of probe readings fell into specific buckets and of speeds, but it shows you along the corridor which segments of the corridor uh, were kind of, you know, had excessive delay or excessive speeds. So let me just walk through really quickly uh, a scenario so that we can kind of put our head around what is in the output data visualization of a corridor speed bin analysis. You set it all up based on, it's, it's all segment based, right? It, you know, XD, TMC, um, but the output kind of looks like a corridor speed bin. Uh, roadway diagram down the middle, right? You got the roadway diagram down the middle. Uh, you can do, you know, single direction or multiple directions uh, such that, you know, you're getting these speed bins on either side of the roadway. This illustration is for something I put together for I-95. If you're familiar with cord or speed bin and how the roadway diagrams uh, laid out as, was it Ian that mentioned this? Yeah, I think it was Ian that mentioned. You get labeling uh, along the roadway diagram and the labeling generally aligns with the road segment, the underlying road database segment and its intersection, uh, the primary corridor's intersection um, along the corridor. So Linden Avenue right here, that's that's the junction. This segment corresponds to Linden Avenue uh, as we're moving eastbound on I-95. This is the junction or intersection of Academy. And that segment and this group of bins represents um, the binning of all speed values along Academy, so on and so, so forth, as you move down that corridor. Now, if we look at this particular, you know, this highlighted area, the magenta highlighted area, this use case or scenario that I laid out is for this one particular TMC segment that makes up the entire corridor that I wanted, that I perform my analysis with. So one TMC segment, some of them are shorter, this one's longer, some of them are shorter than others, this one's even shorter. So keep in mind that these bins and their kind of their length corresponds to the, the TMC segment length along the corridor, okay? So I've, I've defined the corridor that I wanna analyze. And then you have to set up the, the temporal parameter as well. In this case, this scenario, I analyzed one day, but then I also only analyzed 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. 
So the way the bin, the speed bins work, it's it's kind of math based. Well, it is math based. <laughs> All our stuff's math based, right? It's taking the number of days that you're analyzing. So in this case, it was only I'm well, I'm only looking at June 25th. That's one day. And I, I in setting up my query, I said I only want to look at 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. I only want to. I only want to know what's happening with probes from the, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So that's 12 hours times one day. It's a total of 12 hours for this one, one day, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Now you can add multiple days. Remember with most, um, most PDA tools, you can have up to seven temporal Kind of date ranges that you're analyzed in the quarter speed bins tool you can only analyze um one time range because the math has to be consistent uh otherwise you're creating just a whole bunch of columns and it would just get unwieldy so you define the the time range um and the the results are basically breaking down for every single segment for the entire 12 hours that's analyzed in each one of these bins, how many of the probe speed readings or how many hours of probe speed readings fell within uh, a particular speed, uh, speed range? So in this scenario, for this particular segment, we had uh, I need my readers again. So this scenario, speeds of 30 to 39 miles per hour, uh, which is this orange box. We had 22 minutes. There were 22 minutes of observed probe speed readings that on that segment between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. on June 25th, speeds of 40 to 49 miles per hour. That's the yellow box pop up here. There was one hour and 21 minutes of observed readings between 40 and 49. The 50 and 59, that's this light green, two hours and 40 minutes. And then greater than 60 miles per hour, seven hours and 20 minutes, 29 minutes. So if you add all of this up, it's 11 hours and 52 minutes. Well, where the how come it's not 12 hours? You know, that's what we started with. Well, there is eight minutes. It's hard to see, but there is a little sliver of red right here. That sliver is eight minutes of, of really slow speeds. So to recap, right, these corridor speed bins, if you look across the bin, you look across the bin, it's, for every segment of roadway, it's binning up the total hours or the percentage of readings. Notice these pop-ups have the percentage in here as well. It's binning up all of the readings for all 12 hours. Every reading that your probe data provider captured, every single one of them, it's grouping it into these bins. Is it a full, is it a full count? No, remember, probe data. So just what we're capturing, what we're capturing in terms of probes that are out on the roadway, largely connected vehicles, some LBS-based data sources, but statistically significant, really, really cool way to kind of group, organize, bin, and quantify in hours or percentage of readings, all uh, probe data readings uh, for uh, the the roadway corridor that you're analyze that you analyzed as well as the um, the time period analyzed. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of examples. I um, so we you know, we use the route selection tool to kind of set up and define uh, the temporal parameter of a corridor speed bin query. 
what I'm going to do, just kind of continue on this thread. If I wanted to run some analysis on this corridor, as I'd mentioned, you can look at any number of combinations of date ranges, right? You can look at individual days. Um, maybe you're just interested in Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday um, for the 5th. And maybe you wanted to look at today is Tuesday, right? So maybe you want to look at every Tuesday in um, October. And maybe you wanted to do the same thing for all of 2022. So again, you can, you can add up to seven different date ranges in here. But then notice you only have you, you can only define the time range um, that you want to analyze against those dates. It, you only have one range of time period that you can uh, analyze for those dates. You set that up. If you want to run it, run your analysis for three different time periods, run it once, you know, reset your, you know, reset your slider and then run it again. Got to make sure you define your data source. You know, start adding report titles, right? This is really useful. When you go to look at my history, you could quickly kind of sort through your history and find the report that's of interest. What I did, I, I, I took a couple of use cases uh, that I thought were pretty interesting. Uh, here in Fairfax County, Northern Virginia, I don't know if somebody shared this article with me or I kind of I discovered it independently, but in Fairfax County, they installed a number of new speed uh, speed cameras in and around schools. And they're just they're nailing people. Right. <laughs> it's like thousands of uh, what if 55,000 drivers were caught speeding since April. So it's it's super effective. Uh, these new these new speed cameras. Um, so I, I took that scenario. I said, you know what? I'm going to do some kind of before, during, maybe after analysis of uh, I'm Justin. Remember my concern earlier? Yeah. They've shown up. Hey, so I'm going to apologize now. There may be a little background noise. And Justin, I'm going to ask you. If I need to pause, if it, if it gets to be too distracting and I need to pause, let me know and it, it should be quick. Um, so I took this use case and I said, you know what? I want to run some, um, one of the schools that they installed one of these speed cameras was uh, South County High School, uh, way southern part of Fairfax County, thus the name South County High School. You know, I used uh, I used the route selection uh, tool to define multiple directions for the analysis in and around the high school. And uh, I said, you know what? I want my analysis to be for every weekday uh, in January, every weekday in May, and every weekday in October, and largely between school hours, right? So I. I just threw in 6 a.m. to 5 p.m., which is generally, you know, people are getting to getting to work. They work at the school, maybe at 6 a.m. and maybe leaving by five. So that was the that, that was the setup for this particular uh, this particular query. Ran my analysis, and oh, I need to reset all this, and discovered some. Pretty interesting results. The output looks like this. By default, you're going to have, you know, there's three performance measures that you can look at within the corridor speed bins tool: speed, congestion, comparative speed. Now, in this use case, we want to try to identify excessive speed. The way the legend for the corridor speed bins is laid out currently. It's not helping me really 
identify excessive speeds. So one of the th one of the first things I had to determine was, uh, you know, I don't know, I I'm not that familiar with South County, th these roads here. I wanted to know what the speed limit was in and around this area. So I used, I used open street map and just did a quick query to determine that all of Silverbrook Road, with exception for around the school, is 35 miles per hour. Of course, it's 25 in front of the school. So in understanding excessive speed and where you might want to deploy enforcement or maybe speed cameras is I said, you know what, let's just jack this up from 30 to let's say like 45 or somewhere close to that, say 44. And then I'm going to move all of these down this way. I'm going to change the colors. Actually, I really don't need to change the colors, but and I'll show you why in a minute. But I'm going to change from 45 and above. I'm going to change that to magenta. I'm going to change this guy to magenta. This one to magenta. So it really shows up, right? And then in my display options, I can just turn off the rest of these values. And voila, now I have now I have a quarter speed bin representing every everywhere and quantifying along my corridor how how many hours that their people were hauling, you know what? Uh, on that particular, between, on that particular segment, 11 hours, 50 to 59 miles per hour. Uh, that's in January. Um, and then this is going northbound, this side southbound. So this is January, closest to the roadway diagram. This is May, the next corridor speed band. And then this is October. Pleasant pleasantly surprised but the um, you know the speed cameras obviously worked uh if you look at these january times southbound we have five hours of excessive speed i'll just keep moving that um 14 hours of excessive speed in january in the northbound sections and this almost looks like it's right in front of this school if i were to plot it out but then in May, in May and uh, October, those numbers went way down. So enforcement uh, is working; it's effective. And all all I did was monkey around with my legend, modify, configure my, you know, configure the color scheme that I want, and then. Voila, I've got a quick, easy data visualization to help tell the story of, number one, the effectiveness of our mitigation measures. Hang tight, folks. For anyone curious, that is uh, leaf blowers that are providing that nice chorus for us. so embarrassing <laughs> so i was joking with justin before we got started I said you know i hear leaf blowers going on and i'm pretty certain that right in the middle of my workshop <laughs> the leaf blower is going to show up and sure enough they are uh it's dying down a bit all right so that's a uh again that's a really cool use case for kind of a you could use this to assess where you need to put countermeasures or assess where you need to put uh, enforcement measures. But in this use case, I leveraged corridor speed bins to determine the effectiveness of enforcement measures. Really, really cool. So the next one I wanted to share with you was uh, kind of a personal one as well. Uh, this one is, I ran some analysis for uh, 
Fairfax County Parkway, which is long, multi, multi-mile multi corridor, 11 plus miles uh, through most of um, uh, through most of Fairfax County. There was some local uh, radar enforcement measures that were uh, put, in, put in place to try to limit excessive speeding during uh, late night hours or early morning hours. And so as I zoom out, you can see I ran my analysis for 12 to 5 a.m. In March, July, and November. March is the interior corridor speed bins. Uh, July and November is the exterior. Law enforcement came out uh, head, hot and heavy along Fairfax County Parkway in the summer to try to minimize excessive speeds. Uh, and what what I what I was in this particular case, surprised to find is that initially there was some impact. You look at March relative to summertime, uh, you know, you look at these speed bins, got greater than 65. It the the number of hours of excessive speed is in both directions, pretty substantially reduced. But what's sad is I noticed in November, the numbers were way back up relative to March of this year. So we had 27 hours of 60 to 63 miles per hour, for instance, about the same. Um, so the, the enforcement measures were working. Uh, for a short period of time, but people are now speeding again because law enforcement is off, uh, off the uh, off the program. Now, what I wanted to share with you really quickly uh, before uh, before I touch on dashboards is that I want to remind everybody because I think we forget that every output data visualization or every output report from Probe Data Analytics you have the ability to export the results. So I wanted to do something fun with this March, July, and November data. And I exported it and integrated it into ArcGIS Online. So this is an interactive map that is showing March, July, and November speed bins and the total hours that were accumulated above 64 miles per hour. So I've created this real quick interactive map. It's being labeled with the total number of hours uh, that speed readings were in excess of 64 miles per hour. I can overlay these. You can see how in November, you know, a lot of the numbers went up, created these pop-ups that provide some information for individual segments. Hey, there are 151 hours of speed readings that were above 64 miles per hour for that particular road segment. 230 hours for that one. So this is just kind of a reminder that while Probe Data Analytics provides some unbelievable, unbelievable uh, analytics capabilities against massive probe, massive amount of probe data and wonderful data visualizations. There's some really cool interoperability things that you could do with it if you're a GIS practitioner and or uh, you know a business you use Power BI or Tableau. Uh, so kind of a fun thing to do and explore. Just another way to share the results of your work. So with that, kind of the last thing I wanted to uh, I wanted to impart with everyone uh, before we go to Q and A is the new dashboard sharing feature and functionality. This is kind of a preview of what we hope to do with a number of different output 
output reports from probe data analytics. Today, we just, or recently we rolled out the ability to share a dashboard, but also embed it. So once you've, uh, once you've shared your dashboard, you can embed it kind of like a output trend map such that it is visible or you can embed it into a website um, or otherwise for anybody to see. Now this dashboard, uh, I, I fabricated this for Florida DOT central office some number of months ago. The new tools or new buttons you're gonna see on your layout uh, within the dashboard tool is this select a dashboard button as well as share button. So if there's a dashboard, let's say, uh, so Justin, you, is the domain name for KMJ just KMJ.com? KMJinc.com. KMJinc.com. So let's say um, KMJ is a consultant to FDOT uh, and somebody from FDOT crafted this, but they wanted to share it back with all the consultants that are supporting, all the consultants at KMJ that are supporting uh, FDOT. You go into, you select your, click the select a dashboard, find the dashboard that you want to share, click the share button, and then just simply type the domain name of who you want to share, <clears throat> who you want to share that dashboard with. So now if Justin were to open Probe Data Analytics, and his dashboard tool, and he clicks the selected dashboard, he'll now see F.Central Central Office dashboard in his list of dashboards. Super easy to set up and share that, share your dashboards across an organization. Uh, in addition to um, um, you know, sharing it with consultants or partner agencies, that's sharing the dashboard. All right. We are running low on time. I, I don't I don't see any questions, but I'm going to uh, I'm gonna stop sharing. <laughs> and well, actually, maybe I'll just leave it up and 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 pose to the attendees who are still on. Do you have any questions? I've been rattling on long enough. As we're waiting for that, I will report that I can already see that dashboard. So that Ooh. was very fast and convenient. <laughs> it works. How about that? Now I can now I can modify that, right? I think I can change it too, right? Yeah, now I can take it off. So really nice. I, and again, this is just kind of a preview of of more to come where we we will enable you to share more of the output reports from Pro Data Analytics um, outside of your organization. I mean, you can share any report today, right? This output report, you know, I'll share this with you guys. You hope, hopefully, you know this uh, by now. Um, how do I submit a question? <laughs> I can't do that because I'm moderator. Anyway, hopefully you know this by now that if you are a pro, if you run any analysis in probe data analytics, the output report does have a unique ID. You could share this you this whole URL with anyone in your with anyone who has access credentialed access to probe data analytics or RITIS, and they'll be able to open it. Oh, there's a question. Speed data bins uh, show raw speeds. Uh, well, this is raw speed. Um, so the question is, do speed speed data bins show raw speed? So as I as I move my cursor over each one of these bins, that's that bin represents thirty to fifty nine miles per hour. Again. If you just want to look at 30 to 31 miles per hour, or actually, 
maybe you want to look at 55 to 50, 50 to 56. You want to bend it up. You can bend, you can bend these things up any way you want. You just configure, configure the color thresholds accordingly. And that is raw speed. It's just bending it into the num it's it's bending that raw speed and the number of hours that probe data was captured at that raw speed for that month and for those road segments. Does that answer your question? Hopefully it does. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. Um, so really quickly, I'm going to head back over to my PowerPoint and just um, share with you the QR code again one more time. If you didn't get that earlier, that is a QR code to PDF copy of today's slide deck. Want to thank you very much for your time today. Uh, it was an hour and fifteen minutes that I was that I certainly hope uh, was useful, and will get you excited to try out some of these new features and functions uh, within Redis Probe Data Analytics. Uh, happy holidays to everyone. Uh, be safe and uh, enjoy some time with family and friends. Thanks. We'll wrap up now.